What is going on guys? Channel out of NC here and uh, the weather is just too perfect to not go out and make a video. Guys, I'm a lost cause. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Check out no gloves. I know it. I know it. I know it. I know it. I apologize. That is uh, totally my fault and I know I need to get better at that. But and, uh, today I wanted to make a video just to kind of clear the air about these bikes. Uh, about the Hawk, about the TBR7, about the Bras, about the Hawk DLX, about uh, about all of them. <laughs> it, uh, so uh, yeah, let's go ahead and clear the air about some of this stuff. Who should buy one of these bikes and who should not? So we're gonna start with who should. We're gonna start with who should not buy these bikes first. I feel like that's a, a good way to start this. <laughs> See, that was pretty weak there. Uh, let's go ahead and talk about who should start. I mean, who should buy to start. So uh, the people that should buy this bike, no, the people that should not buy this bike is what we'll start with. You should not buy these bikes if you expect to, uh, if you expect to buy this bike offline from a dealer. Let me say TX Power Sports, Q9 Power Sports, Arlington Power Sports, all of them. Orion Power Sports. Don't expect to buy this bike and have it shipped to your door, put together, and running correctly. And the reason I say that is, uh, this bike comes in a crate, and uh, I think I have a picture of the Magician in a box that I'll show y'all, just so you have an idea how it comes. They all come similar. The Magician is a little more, um, let's say, compacted into the box, meaning that the, the rear shock isn't, isn't bolted on. It, um, you have to realign that. That made it shorter to get in the box and things like that. But, it, um, yeah, these bikes, just they don't come ready unless you pay extra for a service and if you pay extra for that service and you get it delivered you don't know who delivered it you don't know if it was friday at 4 55 when that dude was finishing your bike or not and um you got to do things you got to lock tight screws you got to make sure the bolts are there you got to make sure there's no defects and parts that you can tell right off the bat sometimes you can't tell stuff like that but you got to make sure there's no missing parts you want to make sure that you're uh it's just that's all stuff that you need to learn to do and that's part of the beauty of these bikes is that you really get to learn how they operate me i didn't ride bikes really i'd rode a couple friends bikes before and i never actually owned my own motorcycle until i bought this tbr7 right here and uh and i loved it i've loved every minute of it i've learned that this bike has forced me to understand motorcycles it um but if you expect it to come to you ready don't buy one <laughs> it, uh, you're gonna have to do things you're gonna have to adjust your valve blast yeah you might get away not doing it you might get away with not doing it you're gonna have some uh, some super super tight valves though I would imagine you're not gonna be running your motor at the, the the optimal range it should be riding in but you um yeah you uh see here valves come super tight clutch is gonna need to be adjusted they come with uh Eh, not so great chain sometimes and um, that's all stuff you need to think about if you want to uh, if you want to spend thirteen hundred and fifty dollars but you expect your brand new bike to come ready I'm sorry but it's it's just not possible you got to work on your carburetor these bikes come super lean and uh, talking like 88 main jets generally in a lot of them the magician from what I've seen has come with a 98 I haven't cracked it open yet and I'll tell you why I haven't cracked a Magician carburetor open yet. It's because I'm not using that junk carburetor. I went ahead and ordered one of the, what do you call it? it starts with an H. I can't even remember. The VM26 clone carburetor. And it's been, the, I put that carburetor in this bike and this bike's doing amazing with it. And uh, I've kind of shifted my riding style a little bit now, y'all. I haven't been full throttling everywhere. I've just been relaxing and taking the ride and I've realized how much more enjoyable it is. Because, you know, most of the time when I ride, I'm talking to y'all anyway, so <laughs> I'm just going to slow down and talk. But, um, yeah, just different stuff. Like, you're going to have things that you need to work on, too. That um, people that expect the, the bike to come without any kind of problems. When you buy these bikes, just like the guy on YouTube said, I can't remember. It was called Testing the World's Cheapest Motorcycle. And he did the video on a TBR7. It was a 2019, the one that still had the drum brakes in the rear. But, um, yeah, he did the video on that, and he was we were talking about it and you have a known set of problems like the tbr7 and the crankcase breather the crankcase breather valve it um a lot of people have to do reroutes i unfortunately had to do a reroute this is where that's at uh, me and justin uh justin the air i believe how you say his last name awesome dude we were talking about that and trying to come up with a better way to do it but um but yeah that's just a known problem 
and uh, and I heard about it, Milky uh, Milky Oil in the airbox, but I don't have an airbox anymore. I did an airbox delete, put the K&M pod filter on, and, uh, and I've been running running smooth since. It's just I had a little hiccup where I forgot to drain this, and now it uh, I drained it today, and I'm riding, and I have no problems at all. So, it uh, yeah, there's that. It's just there's a lot of things that you gotta keep in mind with these bikes that you gotta fix. You can't neglect them, and you treat this bike good and the experience that you get for when you do buy a Japanese bike if you decide to buy one is amazing it's incredible like looking at this bike everything is so simple it is so simple and I know I completely did this video wrong <laughs> the way I was starting to do it I originally wanted to do this video as a uh, basically just reasons why and reasons why not but uh yeah so it, uh, this bike is just so incredibly simple that you can see how something works and it's explained to you in the dumbest down way possible to to understand and I, I give this bike major points for that I've been able to understand how almost everything on a motorcycle works for the most part because everything is so modular and when you move on to bigger bikes like you're moving on let's say you're starting to look at 600s or something it's a lot of it's close to the same and, uh, and I see the differences now and the difference between a motor being just a cam motor and just a simple push rod motor just from looking at what my motor's got versus looking at what kind of motor is in the Apollo DB36. You know, with the overhead cam there. So it's just, it's stuff that you really start to notice and it really grows your, your mental vocabulary about these bikes and just everything that you know. And it's wild because I never would have thought eight months ago that I would know what I know about motorcycles, <laughs> you know? And you meet some awesome friends along the way too. The Hawk 250 owners group is really cool. But, yep. And uh, for the people that should buy these bikes, I guess we'll go back to that kind of style of video. Anybody that wants something fun for $1,350 that you can slap a plate on and drive on the road, that's the best part. This bike was brand new. I mean, a brand new bike. 13 no I paid twelve hundred eighty nine dollars but that's what you can get them for now is about thirteen fifty but the TBR7 is not in stock of course right now but um the Hulk's really close Hulk's really really close but yeah so the people that should buy it that people that enjoy learning about something this bike is perfect just putting this bike together out of the crate you learn a lot that you might not have known before like when just with that checklist making sure that you've got the right kind of spark plug making sure it's gapped right making sure your valves are properly set that um i mean it's just you you get a filler gauge and you go in there and you and you know it's just you, you learn how to do that and it's awesome that you can learn how to do that because you can use those skills throughout your whole riding your whole riding career i guess i could say <laughs> yeah i could not think this bike enough it is it is most definitely sprouted me into a more knowledgeable individual about motors especially small engines it's awesome when you work on these bikes you instantly know how to work on weed eaters and stuff and i know a lot of y'all already knew how to do this before this is just for those people that uh that might be doubting buying one it uh but i mean like this bike right here whenever i push it yeah i can get 70 72 mile an hour out of it and it's it's absolutely crazy that you can get transportation like that brand new for that price and you know you just change your sprockets it's all simple upgrades that are fun upgrading this bike is fun it's not expensive like i mean a nice exhaust on this bike's a hundred bucks i mean i installed this cluster for what i paid 40 something bucks for it and then i put in all the sweat hours of <laughs> figuring out how to wire it up but i mean this cluster 40 something bucks it uh chain 20 bucks sprockets if you change both sprockets 30 bucks i mean it's awesome you can't beat it and uh yeah so i guess that's all i was going to talk about today i just wanted to kind of get a video out to you guys because i wanted to talk about the people that um that get these bikes too and they call them junk these bikes are not junk it's generally just if you don't have the patience to sit down and try to understand the bike the bike's cheap for a reason it uses cheaper quality parts than japanese counterparts and whatnot but yeah it's it's still good enough to hop on and ride and if y'all have been watching my channel you can see that if y'all have been watching patrick Choi, patrick Choi is awesome i love his family they um i mean he put what he's got 13,000 miles on his hawk now and it's still chucking moto cheese is a magician hit 10,000 miles and it's just awesome 
to see just the kind of reliability you can get out of something Chinese that you never thought could have been possible before. It's just as long as you sit and do that prep work, if you sit and do that prep work, you are golden. Yep, it's just a matter of prep. See, a lot of people get the bikes and they tear them out of the box, half slap on the handlebars and try and start her up with the oil it ships in. And I hear people talking about not changing the oil before they start the bike. I'm like, come on guys, that is not regular motor oil, that is shipping oil. Just go ahead and throw in some, uh, the oil I use, if y'all are curious, it's the kind everybody else uses that has this kind of bike, uh, Rotella um, T4. And, uh, I use mine in, what is it, 15W40? And I'm in North Carolina, so anybody around here that doesn't have crazy shift in elevation, I think I'm about 700 to 750 feet elevation. And uh, if you're around my area anyways, your, your oil is probably going to be the same for this bike. Some people in areas that are mad cold might have to use a different, different viscosity, but that's not my expertise at all. So <laughs> if I said that wrong, if that's completely wrong, don't, don't murder me in the comments, y'all. But yeah, this is just a beautiful little cruising bike. I don't need to go crazy fast. I just want to go out and ride and do it affordably, which is what you can do with these bikes. It opens that door. I mean, to the point where it opened the door where I've got two Chinese motorcycles. I got the Magician, I got this one. And all in all, both of them, it ended up being less than less than $3,000. What is that? It had to be about $2,600 for two bikes after all said and done. And I think that's awesome to have two bikes. I'm excited, you know, my brother, whoever, whoever's buddies with me, that's with me, can hop on one of the bikes and we can go a little sport it up somewhere. It's a lot of fun. But, uh, but cool beans, y'all. Hopefully this video helped out. I know this video got completely off course, but it, uh, one thing that I do really appreciate, y'all, whenever, I, I'm going to go ahead and say this. This sounds really cheesy. I refresh my YouTube statistics all the time just to see if I get one more subscriber or one more like or whatnot because it really it's really really exciting to me that the content that I make makes other people feel like watching more it's awesome it's awesome that y'all appreciate what I do and I don't do much I just go out here and ride and talk to y'all it's, it's just awesome I appreciate you all if you do like this video go ahead and hit like go ahead and comment and subscribe and uh, if y'all have any questions about the bikes, y'all are free to ask. I generally reply to everybody. If I don't, it's because I either forgot or, uh, or I have just been slammed. But yeah, I really try to make it a point to reply to everybody. So if y'all have any questions, just hit me up. And uh, if it's something I can help you with, I will most definitely help you. If it's something I feel like somebody else would be better on, I'd point you in the right direction. But uh, the cool beans, y'all, it has been awesome. And, uh, these vids are always fun to make, especially with weather like this. I've never felt so comfortable. <laughs> this weather is incredible. But, yep, then again, I will talk to y'all soon. Y'all rock. And like, comment, subscribe. Comment if you have any suggestions, anything you want me to talk about, or any kind of challenges even. I think there's some challenges in this bike. But, uh, awesome, guys. I'll see you soon.